upper. Uh, and the last question, this is a, this is a, a conundrum. If you could get millions of dollars but had to lose your leg, would you? <laughs> That's, you know, I can't, I, 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 on set, we all were like, I'm not going to do that. It's David Stark from Watcher Pass, and I'm talking to Ariel Roman, the director of 1992, which is coming to theaters on August 30th, 2024. I'm going to talk to him right now. While you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. I'll say that a lot. Thank you. So thanks so much for joining me today. I've got Ariel Roman, the director of 1992, which is coming to theaters on August 30th, 2024. It is a heist thriller that is set in the backdrop of the LA riots. It has a fantastic cast, some really good tension, and a lot more emotion than I expected. I am very excited to talk to you. So thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for uh, talking to me. Of course, of course. So, first question: How did you get involved in this film? I know you you co-wrote the script, but uh, how did you get involved in this like overall process? I was, you know, basically sitting uh, actually in a friend's house reading the script. He was uh, post the George Floyd's riot, so LA was still burning. You know, you could still smell the smell. You're driving down the streets. You feel that you know um, some train passed by and racked everything, and then you see reading a script that happened 29 years ago when I I, I was not at that time living in LA, but it felt as real and as relevant as it could be. So I got I got involved by basically reading a script and feeling very relatable to the concept and to everything that Sasha tried to portray, and felt that you know it's the need to dive in put in my you know ideas and you know cast it together put it together and shoot it yeah for sure and that's interesting i mean that that makes sense right like the world was kind of in chaos or at least it felt like it was in chaos and so uh, you're reading this script about another time when the world felt in chaos and it uh you know kind of you have a relation relation there one thing i loved about this film uh is just like the feel of 1992 i guess like the music was perfect the look was perfect uh you said you weren't in la during that time how did you kind of arrive at that look arrive at this like you know different time period well i arrived to la for, i mean for the first uh, first year that i actually been visiting la in my life was 92. so oh, okay. I, I can visit la just uh post post those uh the ronnie king riots and then I moved to LA in 2000. So I kind of like, I, I, I've been 24 years in LA, you know, now, but I, you know, you, you live in a city, you feel it, you understand the culture, you, you, you expose to different sides, you understand the conflict, you understand the sensitivity, and you learn about the trauma that the, the people have been through. So when I read the script, I also had like, you know, a three-dimensional feeling, like I said, like I could I could actually see the streets when I scouted that, that they were almost, you know, post-COVID or during COVID riots. It's like it was a desolate, almost like um, visuals that I could feel it when I said it. And then obviously you're going into massive research and, you know, the 90s and the 70s and the 80s and even the early 2000s were a period of time that we could shoot movies and intellectual relationship between people that the focus on this concentration of people in conversations or in a scene. It's actually between, they kind of like we were present and, you know, without the cell phones and without the electric cars, and without all of that. So it's, you know, it was a time that actually the world looked more authentic um, so you're just going in and you're diving in with all the department and you learning, you know, not only from your memories as, as, as a young man that I lived at that time in the world, but like in specifically those neighborhoods, those homes, those people, what they were wearing, what, what, what music they were listening to, how the kitchen looks like, how they were cool, which pot to use in yours, which frying pan they used to make the, the scramble eggs. I mean, literally you're getting into every detail that you can bring. And then eventually you're creating a canvas that's supposed to, you know, serve you to, you know, communicate better. Who are those people and where are we? Yeah, I'm sure. It's interesting you mentioned like, you know, that time there were no cell phones, no internet, all of that. Because when I was watching this film, I mean, I know it's set in this chaotic time, but like, it, I didn't long for it, but it was like, that, that was a simpler time back then, right? Like we didn't have the connectivity we have now. We, you know, this event was a shocking event that was, everyone was glued to for, months and months on end and nowadays like that would be a big moment and then it would just move on to some other cycle or people or there would be weird takes and whatnot and it was it was interesting to like transport myself back then and and relive that and relive that time period now that we have this new world that we're all living in 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, it's to, just to show you also the power of the word of mouth. It's still the strongest power, you know, mm-hmm. more than any post on, on the website. Eventually, if people talk of people moving, it's like if you hear the noise of human outside the window, you know, what I mean, it's most it, it's more powerful to you to, to join something than you just read a post that happens in a different state. Um, so communication levels, you know what I mean? All that stuff. So in storytelling, it's always, you know, I wouldn't say that it's a it's a blessing for writing but when you have a conflict between two people and you need to put them in a a specific situation you know it's much easier if the person has an access to a cell phone and say oh hold on let me call my son let's see or let me um let me see his gps location oh he's in crenshaw and i'm gonna go get him (laughs) right now um or i'm going to send uh, somebody so of course like you know even even in a convoluted effort as a human being like you need to go back into the hood and look for your son that becomes a task that becomes something that you might succeed you might not succeed now if you succeed is because it's by chance because you were responsible because you're a father and now you're going to take him into a safe place but obviously everything turned into even much bigger chaos um so i think without the internet without the cell phones you know we are actually way more connected and actually way more attentive to what's happening among us and it's with our kids it's with our friends it's with our thoughts with our political views you know we used to have individualism and instinct and right now because we are so suffocated for our time with those machines and information you know we are a part of a herd that is running by necessarily, you know, forces that your own voice within the choice is diminished. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, yeah, definitely. We are a lot less present, a lot less focused on like, you know, the now and we're more focused on other things, other distractions, essentially. Um, what I loved a lot is is this film's cast. Like, this was a fantastic cast. I loved Tyrese as like the, the main character. I thought that was, you know, I love seeing him in a dramatic role. I thought that was a really powerful role. And I also love seeing Ray Liotta. This must have been one of his last uh, movies that he did. How did you get this cast? What was it like working with them? Well, each each one, you know, one by one. A lot of them, you know, especially the young cast, it was is through auditions and discoveries, which I'm very proud and, and 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 grateful for, you know, for making the right decisions. And then there was like working with Ray. That was our second film together. We did the Iceman as well, and and I had like a certain relationship with him that I knew, and he was just ready to do a down and dirty movie. <laughs> second to last movie, yeah, literally, he, he yeah, really, very literally. <laughs> so he was a second to last movie uh, in that he actually filmed, but it is the last movie that is going to be distributed on cinema. That really oh, is. Um, so it's, you know, as I said, it, 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 there is there is a certain responsibility you're carrying with that, to, you know, to be part of his legend, uh, legend, you know, legendary, you know, career working with all those giant directors and filmmakers that he was a part of and to deliver such a great performance um, on his last film and kind of like bring back the good old vibes of the good fellows, like at least in his sociopath manners. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm 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 very very grateful that I had the opportunity to at least to have one more dance. Yeah, for sure. And I love seeing at the end the in loving memory. You know, at the end of the credits, that was a a nice kind of touching moment as well. Because, like I said, this is this is what his last movie, and so this is kind of like the end of his body of work, his great body of work. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, so I know we have limited time. I'm going to have some really short uh, follow-up questions. These are lightweight, so feel free to skip any of them if you don't want to answer them. But I try to keep them very light and answerable. Uh, first question, this movie involved uh, trying to get some platinum. Do you have anything that's platinum, any platinum jewelry, any platinum on you? Oh, I'm I'm a I'm very simple person. You know, <laughs> I, I don't even have a watch. I, I learned about the platinum because when I even when I moved to to California, they were required to all have a catalytic converter, you know, and they all had platinum because of uh, CO2 um, consumption. Um, so that's how I involved. And then I realized that platinum is more expensive than gold. And I was like, wow, that's like, you know, if you're wearing platinum, you're, you know, that's, that's a valuable thing. So in the night way up there. So in the 90s, platinum is like, you know, it was like the, you know, the expensive gold. So just like it's a good no but i don't personally upper uh, and the last question this is a, this is a, a conundrum if you could get millions of dollars but had to lose your leg would you <laughs> that's you know i can't i i i on set we all were like 
I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and, and, and then the other guy says, but why won't you? Um, I think in 2024, my answer with my trust of uh, in Elon Musk and, and AI, I probably will lose my leg. <laughs> so the machines are bad, but maybe in the future they'll be and better. A bionic leg with a with a Neuralink chip. I'll communicate. Give me the yeah. bunny. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, look, you know that that is, that is a logical answer, and yeah, I'm sure they'll probably be in the future. Sure they'll be robot legs, right? Like by the time that you would really miss it, they'll be robot legs, so you'd be fine. <laughs> so you can see that horrible choice, and this really interesting, thrilling heist thriller. Uh, it's coming to theaters on August 30th, 2024. This is Ariel Roman. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, man. Go see the movie. That was Ariel Roman, the director of 1992, which is coming to theaters on August 20th, 2024. It is a crime heist thriller set in LA in 1992 during the LA riots. It has a fantastic cast, some very tense moments, and a lot more emotion than I expected. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.